Good day to you all. Um, all right, so we've got another video here for you that is going to be kind of introducing the first topic in this unit um, when it comes to conservation principles. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about conservation principles and then what systems are today. Um, the essential question is, how can I use open and closed systems to track the flow of conserved variables over time. Um, conserved basically means saved. So conservation is basically um, a word you can use to describe something when you're saying you're wanting to keep something the same amount. Uh, so it's to keep the same amount of something over a period of time. So it, it may change a little bit, but um, over time, it's going to stay the same. That sounds weird, but we'll get to more. So as a physicist can tell, there are only two, uh, there, I'm sorry, there are only six variables uh, that are always conserved in our universe. And so we talked about that a couple of videos ago. Uh, they can't be created. They can't be destroyed. So we've got mass. We've got momentum. We've got angular momentum, which we don't talk much about this year. Um, energy, we're, which we're going to get into soon. Uh, charge, which um, I believe I told you we'll do a little bit in the electricity unit with this, but you'll see more of this in chemistry. And spin, we don't talk about much this year. Uh, that'll be coming up later on for you. But all those um, different types of variables can't be created or destroyed. So systems, um, when you're wanting to draw a system, um, there's something called an open system and a closed system. And so when you're drawing a system around an object or objects, there's a specific way to do that. And you're doing this to kind of separate it from everything else in the universe. And this ends up making problems like a little bit easier to solve because you're not thinking of all the other things at that moment. So the way this works, um, let me kind of put the picture, there we go, um, is this. So let's say we're trying to talk about this wood block that's part of this system. Um, and so what you do is you literally draw a box around it and you're saying, I am talking about just this wood block. OK, um, that's considered a closed system. And I'll get a little bit more into that in just a few. But you have to do a solid line. OK, an open system, you do a dash line. And so you got this fancy schmancy car. Is this a Lamborghini, a Ferrari? Uh, I don't know. Um, so an open system. There you go. You have dashed lines. That's a dead giveaway. OK. So the difference between these two, in a sense, is this. A closed system, we talk about matter um, not being able to enter and exit the system. In an open system, it can. OK, and we'll get more into this. So a closed system, um, you're assuming the object or objects in that like solid line box are completely isolated. So nothing goes in or out, but the stuff inside there can kind of move around and transform. OK, um, I think of a closed system in a way as like a locked door to a room. OK, nothing can enter or exit. So what's going to happen is in a closed system, there's going to be the same amount of sigma or total each time uh, of like each conserved property, sorry, in any moment of time. So what that basically means, let me break that down to you. Um, let's say we're talking about the mass, OK? The total mass is always going to stay the same. Um, the Maybe the total energy is going to stay the same. So the total whatever from those six variables that I mentioned a few slides ago, those stay the same at any moment in time. OK, so let's say we've got this like, again, this wooden block and um, those in that little white box right there are nails. OK, let's say that was two days ago. Closed system. Today, we made it into a cute little bird box, bird box, birdhouse, <laughs> bird box. <laughs> Anyways, um, are the nails still there? Yep, they're they've been used in the process to create that birdhouse. Um, is that wood still there? Yeah, it's been cut up into different pieces so that it can create that birdhouse. So the amount 
of, let's say, mass, the total mass or the sigma uh, mass has stayed the same in this, all right? Now, an open system, different. Okay, matter can enter and exit, um, or those variables have that freedom to move around. So we've got our fancy car. I don't know about you, I don't like this color car. I'm not a big orange car fan, um, but I do like the doors. Anyway, so let's say we've got an open system here. So um, mass, energy, momentum, charge, any of those like fundamental variables, they can move in and out of the system. Okay, if I do this, does it make you dizzy? kind of makes me dizzy. Anyways, um, so you can track the change or that delta. Remember that triangle means delta or change um, in each of those variables in the system. Okay, so let's give you an example. So let's say a positive change in mass and a positive change in energy. So let's say people go sit in that car because it's an open system. And so let's talk about the mass. The more people that go in there, the more mass there's going to be. Um, and that change in energy, let's say you start um, like filling up that gas and you got a full tank of gas ready to go. Eventually, that's going to change, right? So let's talk about it the other side, a negative change in mass, a negative change in energy. How could that happen? So let's say um, when we talk about heat, which will be coming up soon, when we talk about energy, it's thermal energy. As you're driving that car around um, or as you're burning that gas, you're generating heat. And so you're losing that mass in heat, actually. Um, or I'm sorry, I said that right. Or I said that wrong. You're losing that energy in heat. Um, and then the tailpipe gases. So um, if you ever notice, like when people are driving their car, you see some of that smoky exhaust come out. That's something. And so that's the gasoline that's been burning and it's coming out of the exhaust. So you're losing that mass too. Um, the rubber. So what's going to happen is as you're driving, what's happening to that tire as you keep driving or maybe you slam on your brakes? Eventually, those tires are going to wear out. So your tires are actually going to lose a little bit of mass. Probably not a lot, but depends on how long you drive that car for. So if you guys see, like, you can have mass increase there and then eventually go out. You can have energy increase and then eventually decrease. And so difference between open and closed system really is what variables can actually move in and out of that system. Open system, they can. Closed system, uh-uh. Um, so here's your summary. And we'll be talking about this quite a bit this semester, even after this unit. Um, so it says, how can I use open and closed systems to track the flow of conserved, or remember saved, variables over time? All right. Have fun. Goodbye. Where's my pause button? Oh, I forgot we had a little comic. I keep forgetting that. So it says, today for show and tell, I brought a tiny marvel of nature. A single snowflake. I feel like a, an elementary school teacher reading a story to you guys. I think we might all learn a lesson from this, how, or how this utterly unique and exquisite crystal turns into an ordinary boring molecule of water, just like every other one when you bring it into the classroom. And now, while the analogy sinks in, I'll be leaving you, uh, leaving you drips and going outside. <laughs> Anyways, um, so this is actually an example of kind of an open system. That snowflake ends up turning into water. And actually, yeah, and then eventually it will evaporate into air. So there's matter like in mass entering and like exiting this system. All right, y'all, now I'm officially done. Goodbye. Ah!